Good morning all. Time to upgrade the electric bike from lead acid batteries to lithium iron phosphate cells. So here's the battery pack uh, that came with the bike. Now this contains two lead acid uh, 12 volt gel batteries. So I'm just gonna open that up and take a look at those. So here they are, two of these enduring batteries. Bit of a misnomer that, I think. 12-12, uh, so 12 volt, 12 amp hour. Uh, that's over a 20 hour discharge period. Now the pos of the battery goes from here through this fuse, uh, 40 amps if I remember rightly, to the outside terminal of the three pin connector. Um, but, uh, but then it follows on through to this relay and when you're riding the bike, when you're consuming power, uh, the power is only supplied to the socket when this relay is on. So I'm guessing that uh, it powers up this lead and that goes to the centre terminal on the connector. So uh, it must be centre and negative, which is what the bike uses. Now there's a key switch here, uh, which looks like that. And that's used to energise this relay and thus supply power to the socket, which is around the back here. Um, so I need to take these two batteries out but before I do that, I'm going to put this thing back together because I want to just see what it's like in the bike. I also want to weigh this with my little uh, weighing scales so I get an idea of whether switching to lithium ion phosphate makes a significant weight difference. So let's check the weight. Let's switch this on and uh, hook it over here. Okay, that's stabilised. Oh, I can't lift that with one hand. Okay, that's locked at uh, 9.225 kilograms uh, total weight of the battery pack with the lead acid cells, batteries. Hmm, the tyres are a bit flat. So, pump to the rescue. Let's uh, pump them up. Now, the battery may not be fully charged. It's showing the bottom of the uh, two, I think it's two orange lights and green at the top there and if I put a bit of power on it very quickly goes to red. Um, possibly if I charge the battery up this would be better but this battery is nothing like as good as it was when it was new so let's lose them now and go to the lithium cells. So these are the headway uh, 10 amp hour lithium ion phosphate cells. You put them in these uh, end frames which are interlocking, they clip together and then you put these uh, metal straps across to connect them all together. I've made up one pack of four which is almost exactly the same size as the lead acid battery in the battery pack. Uh, so the other four are here, I've yet to make those up. I've located the metal work for them and a fuse to do the internet interconnect between the two packs but I can see a bit of an issue here and that is that one of these packs is going to sit vertically on top of the other one and uh, apart from these little plastic studs sticking up that's the only thing holding one pack off the other and of course I don't want all the metal work to touch uh, so I'm going to have to put some sort of separator in between these two packs. So here are the two finished packs now I've done them in such a way that um, I'm thinking eventually of taking power off, I don't know, these bottom two terminals. They're quite close together. These top two I will link with the fuse, which is here, so somehow run that fuse connection down onto these top two terminals, and then take my final outputs from these two. I think if I flip these both round, it's all so far apart, I'm not going to be able to get to it very easily. But you can see that um, even when these standoffs touch each other, the connections are getting very, very close. That top one's about three millimeters. The one at the bottom actually looks more like two millimeters. Can't see that one very well, but it's down there. They're very close together. Now I thought possibly some of this white foam that came in the box with the headway cells um, sandwiched between all of these 
and then some heat shrink sleeving around these posts so that they can't misalign. I'm not sure whether heat shrink sleeving is going to be tough enough, but um, that's the only idea I've had so far. Um, if these are touching the shear force, I would have thought that would hold. I honestly don't know, but with the foam sandwich between these connections as well, I'm hoping that that will do it. Now these red uh, ring terminals that I got from Eclipse Bikes I think have too small a wire aperture for this fuse wire but I got some yellows which I think are too big and these blues look about right so let's solder those I'll go inside and solder those onto this fuse. So here's the fuse holder um, I've screwed that onto that terminal taking the fuse out of course so that this other end doesn't short onto anything while I'm doing this. Uh, the fuse will be this green 30 amp, not sure if you can see that, that'll go in there. Uh, okay so now this other side needs to come around like that and connect to the other pack. Let's do that. So here's my foam separator which um, isn't really needed as long as I can keep these pegs precisely aligned between the bottom pack and the top one. I was going to use heat shrink but I've just seen these pens and I've taken one apart. It's a bit loose but I think if I cut some short lengths of um, biro tube and put them over there then that might be a bit better for maintaining the alignment. I'll probably heat shrink the inner ones anyway but let's uh, cut this up and see how we go. So it's time to uh, clip the connections off the lead acid cells. Now this wire looks long enough with this fuse to reach down to the center of the battery box here where my connections on my uh, lithium pack will be. Uh, the black wire already comes all the way down here so that's easily going to be long enough. So let's just cut these two off the lead acids. I can't pull these connectors off because they've soldered them on so I'm going to have to cut them and then attach them to my new pack. Well that all fits in there quite nicely. Got my but bits of biro to hold the two packs apart. That's sitting on something reasonable at this bottom end. Uh, some bits of foam to pack it out here at the top end. The fuse will tuck down in there, which is quite neat. Uh, so all I need to do now is attach the red and black wires to these two points at the top here. Uh, Paws is the shiny one, I think, and black is the black coloured one. So I'll fit those on. I'm going to do some outdoor soldering. I've got my uh, high power soldering iron into an inverter onto this battery here. So let's see how I get on with uh, soldering these connections up. Right, I think that's it. They're all uh, packed out with bits of foam on the sides. Uh, my connections here, pause and neg there. The fuse here, I've put that in. So let's close that off and tuck that in there and then attempt to get the cover on. Actually that might be a bit tricky there. I'll have another look at that. Uh, the relay will tuck down inside there. More padding there to protect these connections. And uh, just a case of getting the cover back on. Let's see if I can do it. Now this feels so much lighter. I can very easily lift it with one hand. Unfortunately I haven't been able to put the handle back on properly because there are some wires in here behind there where the screw goes in. I can't be bothered to take it all apart again so let's get the uh, weighing scales and see what we've got uh, when this thing can't see what it's doing because the LCD's gone all hot. Let me let it cool down a bit and that is 3.680 so yes, that's less than half the weight of when the lead acids are in. 3.68? Yeah, 3.68. So that's very good in terms of uh, weight reduction. So the pack's in the bike uh, with the lithium cells. Let's switch on. And on the gauge, I've put this in the shade now. Well, it's interesting because the orange light appears to be on. But so are the two green lights. They're not as bright, they're dim. So I'm not quite sure what that's telling me. And if I turn the switch off, the key, it briefly goes to red and then of course fades out. 
as a capacitor somewhere loses its charge. So I'm not quite sure about this green and orange thing. If I turn the throttle, it certainly seems to have uh, plenty of power and it's not turning red. Now, of course, on this system, I've got no way of knowing what the cell voltages are. And if you take them too low, uh, bad things happen to these lithium ion phosphates. So I'm winging it a bit at the moment. But I'm just going to have a little ride around the garden and see if this thing has a lot more power. I certainly have a lot less weight now uh, than I'm used to with the lead acid. Well, I don't have a phone clamp, so I'm just going to hold this. But... Uh... It seems to have been a bit sluggish uphill. Yay. Downhill, of course, it's got tons of power. Uh, okay. So I've just come out to uh, a nearby street. It's a bit quieter, this one, not so many cars. That's ironic. Um, and I'm going to just take it once around the block. Uh, that should be well within the capacity limits of the cell, so I shouldn't be uh, taking them to dangerously low levels. Um, but I just want to get a feel for how powerful it is, top speed, ability to climb hills. This is a bit of a hill climb up this road. And uh, I'll see how it goes. Well, that was interesting. Um, doesn't seem to be any more powerful than it was with the uh, lead acid batteries. But it's much more consistent. There's no voltage droop. Um, the light on the handlebar grip stayed on orange the whole time, didn't go to red at any point, even when I wasn't pedalling, going uphill, full power, and so on. I mean, of course, it's a huge amount lighter than it used to be, about six kilos lighter or five kilos lighter than with uh, the lead acids. But uh, yes, yeah, very interesting ride. Now, of course, what I need to do now is measure the cell voltages to make sure I haven't taken them below. Shouldn't have done, because I only went once around the block. Uh, taking them below their minimum safe voltage. So let's open this thing up, get my DVM, and measure every single cell. Right, let's measure this one here. And that is 3.3 volts, which is way above the minimum. Can't even remember what the minimum is now, but I know it's not 3.3 uh, because the nominal is 3.2. Um, I've measured the top four, which are the ones I can get to, and they're all almost exactly the same, almost exactly 3.3 volts. So there's a long way to go before they're in any danger. But of course the problem here is, even if I keep an eye on that little yellow light and wait for it to go red on the bike, that doesn't tell me whether one cell has got out of balance with the others and uh, gone too low. So I do need this uh, little monitor unit, which I'm planning to put on here, uh, fit on a, a box on the side, but um, that I'm not going to do today, that'll be another day, but for the moment I think that was uh, very successful, massively reduced weight, uh, not massively increased power, but then probably isn't legal to do that anyway, but certainly uh, they hold up well, there's no voltage droop, and uh, all in all I think uh, a result. Cheerio!